Uh, our next talk is called uh, Beyond the um, Borderless Workplace. And as I said, it has a poll, so if you want to navigate to, the, to this session, that would be helpful. Our two speakers are Paul Prinsati and Mahendra Durai, and they will, uh, they will give you a little bit of background about their bio. So let me now turn it over to Paul. Do I need that for now? I'm good with this, right? So good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much for coming, uh, spending a few minutes with us to hear us talk about how we at CA are using CA technology to enable secure, convenient access to our enterprise applications and, uh, and our enterprise data on a mobile platform. So, as we said, we're going to, uh, we're going to have some mobile questions for you here in a minute, but first I guess I'll just introduce myself. My name is Paul Prinsati and I'm the Executive Vice President of Operations and our CIO at uh, CA. I've been with the company for around 18 months. And before that, uh, for more years than I'm going to disclose, I spent most of my time in enterprise application software at companies like Taleo, uh, PeopleSoft, and J.D. Edwards. And uh, my colleague, uh, Mahendra Durai, will also be uh, presenting with me today. Afternoon, everybody. My name is uh, Mahendra Durai, like Paul said. Uh, uh, I'm part of Paul's uh, team, report to Paul, in fact. Um, and I'm going to cover some nuances ar around uh, the whole user experience uh, as we go through the discussion. Been with CA for three years. Before that, uh, I was uh, uh, with BMC Software for about five years, and uh, before that with Symantec and Veritas. So looking forward to the conversation. Thank you, Mahendra. So our agenda is pretty simple. We're going to walk you through the business challenge the way we, the way we saw it, uh, take, let, explain uh, our solution, its components, and how it works, and then Mahendra is going to come up and tell you a little bit about uh, the lessons we learned while we were implementing this solution along the way. Before we get into that, uh, we'll go into these polling questions for a minute. So there's just four of them. I just want to understand how the audience is thinking about some of these challenges for yourself. So that first question is, if you have a BYOD, bring your own device at, uh, at your workplace or if you're implementing one currently. All right. So we either don't have any we either don't have any BYOD programs or perhaps the uh, ah there we go perfect. All right. So that's a, that's that's not too different than what I might have thought. So about half of people uh, have one of these programs or are considering it. The next question. This has to do with whether you're using CA's single sign-on solution, former the artist formerly known as SiteMinder. Uh, I ask you this question because this is a, a, a fundamental uh, pillar of our solution. Okay, perfect. So for those of you that don't have CA single sign-on solution, uh, you can still understand what we're, doing with, what we're doing with this, and you could possibly deploy this type of solution without... Uh, CA single sign-on as the back end, but for those of you that do have CA single sign-on, this, this represents a much quicker time-to-value proposition for you. Our third question has to do with uh, your, your enterprise apps that you're trying to expose on a mobile platform. So what percentage? More than 75, 50 to 75, less than 25, etc.? Okay, so a pretty good mix there, but that's helpful to understand how you guys are thinking about that. And lastly, uh, and this one's a little bit uh, trickier potentially, but to the extent that you have mobile applications deployed in your enterprise, are you measuring things like usage, performance, crash analytics, user experience, all those kinds of things? All right, that's impressive. I, 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 I got to say, I didn't think there would be this many, but that's impressive that you're doing that, so good job. All right, so I have my, uh, I have my obligatory industry pundit quote up here, but for us, this is really less than the half of it. 
because as you, as you heard Mike talk about this morning, the application economy is here and it's real. So that means for us, in addition to be able to uh, expose our enterprise applications on a mobile platform, perhaps more importantly, is we want to be able to enable our development community to rapidly build purpose-built mobile applications that are secure and where they can do this in days and weeks, not months and quarters, right? So that's what we're talking about, uh, and that was a key uh, thought process for us to be able to enable that within our enterprise. All right, so the business challenge, the way we see it, there were really three pieces to it. First part was user experience, arguably the most important. When, when I first got to CA and Mahendra and I were talking about this problem, the way we saw it, the way I saw it was our user experience for users using mobile devices to try to see what's going on on our enterprise applications and get access to our enterprise data was dramatically worse than it was for users using laptops and desktops behind our firewall. It just was, and we said, hey, it's the application economy, mobile consumption is, is being demanded, this can't stand. Secondly, security. I don't know any CIO or person of authority who's willing to make the trade-off of I'll give up security in exchange for convenience. It's just, it's just not a trade-off any of us can, can afford to make, so in entering into this, there was no way we were going to be willing to compromise security with this solution. And finally, speed. So as we talked about just a second ago, we need to be able to enable the development of these mobile apps. This is where it's going. This is going to be, I'm talking about especially API assembled composite mobile applications that we're trying to pump out very, very quickly. Or even alternatively, if you are talking about a legacy enterprise app, we want to be able to get that rendered properly in a consistent way on the mobile platform very quickly. So, what did our solution look like? What does it look like? What you're looking at is this is a picture on a tablet of what our one access solution looks like. So this is a native app built on uh, Xcode and Eclipse, depending on whether it's iOS or, uh, or Android. It provides one touch access. So once, you, once you're inside of the one access application itself, which, which you're accessing either with your fingerprint or one time entry of your credentials, the access to all the rest of the applications uh, are all there on this one screen. It doesn't matter if they're native, if they're browser-based, or if they're hybrid, you get the same one-touch access. And just for clarity of definition, so by native, I'm just talking about something that was built on a mobile IDE, so either Xcode, Eclipse, or whatever it might be. Browser-based, I'm talking about, this was the thing you built uh, on, on your distributed system, but you're just rendering it uh, in your, in your uh, application on the mobile. And the hybrid app is maybe HTML5, uh, JavaScript compiled in PhoneGap or something like that. But we want that experience to be completely transparent to our users. We don't want our users to have to care about that or understand it. You come to one place, you get access to all the applications you need, and there's no more entering of the passwords or credentials or anything like that. So, besides one access itself, so besides that native app that we built, what are the rest of the components that enable this solution? So really there's four CA technologies that enable this. Uh, the two on the left are technologies that we consume off our SaaS infrastructure in exactly the same way that you would be consuming it. So I'm a customer of our SaaS infrastructure for our mobile device management product and our CA mobile application analytics product. So if anything goes wrong, since I also happen to run the SaaS infrastructure, I write myself a ticket and a nasty email and I tell myself to straighten up and get it fixed. The stuff on the right are on-premise applications, so CA single sign-on, artist formerly known as SiteMinder, and the, the secret sauce app, the mobile API gateway. These are on-premise on -premise, uh, applications, but actually even those we run in the cloud. So we run those on Amazon's virtual private cloud. So if you look at this whole solution, we don't have one speck of infrastructure in, in one of my IT data centers. So that stuff's all run on a combination of SaaS and IaaS. So what do these four components do? So, and we'll get into a little more details in the next slides, but at a high level, the mobile device management app is what we use to manage the device itself and then to push the, the one access application and to keep it up to date. So that's how, as we develop new tiles, new enterprise applications that we're exposing on the mobile platform, the, the MDM application handles all of that. 
Mobile application analytics is the other part of our mobility suite that we use to monitor usage, performance, crash analytics, and user experience. CA single sign-on is, as I said, this is our backbone uh, single sign-on solution. And finally, the mobile API gateway. We're going to talk more about this in a couple slides. But basically, for us, this is the secret sauce that lets us consolidate all this na native, browser-based, and hybrid applications into one consistent UI, uh, secure with rapid deployment. So what's the experience look like on an, on, on an everyday basis? So three parts to it. The first part is enrolling the device. So this is a one-time thing. You, uh, you join the company, you get an email, it's got a link in it to our uh, MDM, our mobile device management portal. You, you, know, you click on that and you'll enroll the device. Secondly, all you gotta do then is just start using the applications. The, the, there's, nothing, there's nothing more to it than that. And then in the background, people on Mahendra's team are monitoring what's going on via the, the mobile application analytics thing. So it is really, it's really a pretty simple world that people live in, uh, and, and, and we'll spend a few slides here just elaborating. So from an enrollment perspective, this is, this is an example of what an enrollment screen looks like. So you get the email, you click on the email, it takes you to a screen like this, you click the button that says you want to enroll the device, walks you through a little, little wizard which, which, which enrolls the device and then also offers you to install the one access application, which of course you do because that's one of the main reasons you're doing this. Um, and as I said, the, the MDM application is what's responsible for keeping one access up to date as we put new uh, enterprise applications inside of one access. Uh, MDM also does things like the remote services on the device. So that's the actual device manage, management part of, the, uh, of that application. So here we are uh, back at the application. So this is just a slightly blown up view. And as I said, what are the key things? So it's native, it's built on, on, on Xcode and, and Eclipse. Uh, these applications that you're seeing on here are a combination of native and browser-based applications. And uh, as I said, access to one access itself is uh, the either fingerprint or entering of credentials. And then once you click one of these tiles, one or more of these tiles, so it's gonna look something like this. So you get in, this, ha this application, our recognition and rewards, happens to be a native application. You can notice across the top, there's tabs that say things like uh, success factors, recognition, Twitter, Fiori. So these are just applications that in this example, uh, the users clicked on, and then they're saved there in a tab format. So you're not, you're not pressing the, uh, the button on an iPad or something like that to get out. You just switch, you switch between applications much the same way you would do in a browser. It remembers where you are. And also, there's a timeout parameter inside of one access that tells you an inactivity timer that says, here's how long I want you to keep uh, one access alive before somebody's gonna have to log into it again. And then one access controls, even if these individual apps have different inactivity timeout parameters, one access has some logic built in it to keep those things alive. So once you start working during the course of the day, you get a half a dozen of these applications open, it's okay. You just, doesn't matter, close the iPad, open the iPad, do whatever. It's going gonna, it's gonna to hang on to your work and let you just get back in there without all this re-authentication or anything else. So, for us at least, the, uh, the secret sauce, the mobile API gateway. Um, really, this does a couple of things. So, first of all, what the diagram is trying to illustrate to you is the mobile API gateway is really mediating all of that conduit between the device and whatever's going to be going on on the back end. So whether one access is just rendering a browser-based application in a, in, a, uh, in a mobile format, or if it's actually just dealing with a true native application, uh, the API gateway just hides all of that from the user and negotiates with uh, CA single sign-on to handle all that transaction. The second thing is, from a developer perspective, I mentioned early on, What's, what's the, uh, you know, a key requirement going to be going forward? You have to be able to rapidly deploy these purpose-built mobile applications quickly. Days, weeks at the most, not months and quarters. The API uh, gateway is, is, is really a, a lifesaver for that. So it has libraries uh, built into its solution development kit that developers can import into their development environment. And this means that when they're developing these apps, we know for sure that they're implementing the security model, 
and this, and this UI model exactly the way we need it to be implemented. They don't have to worry. So we've abstracted that from them. They don't have to worry about that. That's all taken care of by the componentry that comes with the API portal. And as I said, the API portal is, is the thing that's primarily responsible for the common user interface. So in addition to that, then you can, if you choose, you don't need to do this, but if you choose, then you can take that security down to another level. So special behavior for certain applications, special behavior for certain users or classes of users, uh, special behavior for certain types of devices. So at this point, where's Mahendra? I'm going to let Mahendra come up, and he's going to tell us a little bit more about some of these technical details. He's going to talk about how we use the mobile application analytics product to monitor and manage that user experience. And then since it was his team that actually built and deployed this, he's going to share a little bit about the lessons learned uh, in that process. Thank you, Paul. So Paul mentioned uh, application user and device level security. I'll touch upon a couple of use cases, and then from there we can uh, go into um, the mobile application analytics as well as uh, lessons learned. So when we built this application, we were trying to balance out usability with security. So you can take a use case and say a certain application should work only on a single device. So if a user has multiple mobile devices, then that application should only work on one device because if they leave it open on one device and go off to another device, somebody could gain access to that application, et cetera. So we put a condition for that application that it would only work on one device. Uh, another use case that we are looking uh, to go ahead and, and deploy are some of our executive team members use strategic uh, company information. They have that detail on their mobile devices, and this mobile device has to be access, accessible anywhere, any place. So being able to get to a granular level where that single application is accessible only by Paul's user ID on his iPad or uh, you know, a Samsung Galaxy device, et cetera, that level of granularity you can achieve with the uh, mobile API gateway. Uh, another detail would be our executives travel. So if you are going to a country where potentially there's some cybersecurity risk, you could uh, geofence it where this application can only be accessible and usable uh, from North America. So those are the type of uh, user scenarios and flexible cases that you're able to accomplish and achieve leveraging the mobile API gateway. Uh, internally, we feel this is a paradigm that's going to fundamentally transform IT organizations, and I'll talk a little bit about the talent and the IT transformation we are embarking internally as we are enabling our business to function effectively in the application economy. So, mobile application analytics. Every enterprise has hundreds of applications, if not a th thousands of applications. So, most of these applications are created, deployed, and nobody knows how well they're being used, how well they are uh, delivering productivity for end users. What mobile application analytics allows us to do is really accomplish two things. One, know which applications are being used the most in our enterprise. This way we can get our developers to invest the most amount of time on the applications that are used the most. Uh, this way it's not a one-size-fits-all. The second place uh, is around agile delivery. So as an organization, we are continuously pushing out new applications that are exposed to our end users, and now our development team can work effect effectively with our administration team to understand, as we roll out these solutions, if there are any issues related to an API call, or if there's latency issues when the application works. So it enables the paradigm of DevOps, as well as enabling uh, overall user experience. So those are the two paradigms. What you, see on, what you see on screen is the ability to know what's happening across the landscape. So hotspots, for example, are scenarios where a number of users are having application degradation or performance degra degradation in applications, or you have certain geographies where you have a telecom issue or a telecom outage. So you'll see those as little red spots that start popping up. Obviously, we're not looking at dashboards day in and day out to see if uh, users are having problems. It's integrated into an alerting system that throws out an alert when we have these hotspots. So that's a, a tremendous value add that we see from mobile application analytics. Another use case is uh, once an application is deployed, 
we'll come back to that. Once an application is deployed, under the covers, trying to understand which API is functioning in what fashion. Uh, this works both in terms of troubleshooting and crash analytics, as well as in terms of us being able to deliver rapid application delivery. So our, dev our development teams test the product, deploy it to a core set of test users, and then they can troubleshoot to see which API is taking the longest, and then focus their efforts on that API to go ahead and fix it to get the right end user experience rather than trying to find the needle in the haystack to, uh, to solve a, a productivity problem. The other area is around uh, uh, crash analytics and knowing where errors are being created in the application. So what you see are the number of HTTP errors that an application is throwing out that we can now, uh, as an administrator, work with the developer to effectively troubleshoot those issues. And, and then uh, the other detail is duration of use. Which application is being used the most? And hence being able to provide the right level of support and the right, right level of uh, uh, investments to be able to uh, grow those applications uh, you know, more, more aggressively for the enterprise. And then you can also see user activity. What you see is, uh, at least for this application, predominantly uh, this, was, this was a snapshot we took when, you, when we rolled it out to North America. So what you see is, uh, in the U.S., you, you see most of the activity, and as you roll it out globally, uh, you'll start seeing activity in terms of where users are using it the most. So as we embark on our journey uh, around uh, mobility and getting mobile apps and enabling the overall user experience, what were the lessons that we learned? For us, it's beginning to transform ourselves to become an IT organization that starts and ends with the user experience. So. I'm not talking about anything that you all don't know. Uh, most of your organizations uh, are definitely focused on user experience. So as we looked at this paradigm and said, how should the user experience evolve, one of the things we, we took into account was to look at the solution holistically. And when I talk about holistically, Paul mentioned how uh, innovation happens in an organization at different levels, especially around mobility. Uh, gone are the days where you set up a mobile team and only they develop mobile applications. Now mobile applications are developed by various departments, various groups. So how do you drive and enable that innovation without having to worry about security, et cetera? So that was the impetus for us to get the mobile SDK deployed as a standard so you can achieve agility without, with, with the capability and, and standards being deployed also. So we looked at it holistically, included a single sign-on, uh, because um, single sign-on has been the framework for uh, most organizations on the, on the laptop and the desktop, but not on the mobile device. So now being able to get to a place where you have unified single sign-on, whether you're using web apps, hybrid, or native apps, it's a big paradigm that we all have to sign up for and enable our users to make sure that uh, they are being productive without having to type too many passwords and uh, usernames. And then uh, for us, it was about leveraging the mobile API gateway and to improve security uh, and to be able to get it to a granular level, whether it be on the user, application, or device level, like I shared uh, before in terms of use cases. So as we embarked on this journey, what were the talent requirements? When, when I talk about talent requirements, these are all not positions that we need on a full-time basis. But I want to touch, uh, touch a little bit on the application developer. The application developer, as denoted, is a combination of two roles. One, you, one is a developer who is well-versed in, uh, in um, Eclipse or uh, Java or any of the IDEs that you use to develop your mobile application. The other emerging field that we see that's transforming us as an IT organization, and we believe it'll transform uh, more and more organization is the app API de developer. So being able to have that three-way handshake between an API developer, a mobile application developer, and the UX designer, that's the crux that we see is important to deliver a solution that's going to transform how our users use these applications and are, are productive. The, depending on the size of your organization, you may need... Uh, one API developer, half an API developer. 
uh, and the number of uh, and based on the number of applications uh, you're, you're developing, you could need more than uh, you know more than that number. Uh, and then uh, in terms of security, as we as we deployed the solution, uh, we avail the services of a security architect, probably about 25 percent, not a, not a full time. Uh, full-time security architect, and then you need an application administrator who's uh, fundamentally managing the overall um, implementation of the of the backend infrastructure. So, with that, I will uh, turn it over to Paul to provide us uh, with an overview and summary uh, of the solution. Thank you, Mahendra. So, thanks. So, just to recap on what we started with for, in terms of the business challenge we looked at and what we were trying to accomplish. So, we talked about the user experience. We just, for us, we had, to, we had to be able to get to a place where user experience on a mobile platform is not as good as, but in fact better than, the experience people were having on laptops and desktops behind the firewall. Security, no compromises, has to be top shelf as good as what it is behind the firewall. And finally, speed, we've talked about that a bunch of times. We really, needed, we really wanted to be able to enable our developers to be able to deliver new innovation and new functionality to the user community uh, in very short order. So that's, uh, that's really the story. If you want to learn more about any of these component technologies, you can visit uh, any of these other sessions uh, that are available. And we are going to make ourselves available off to the side here. If anybody has any specific questions that you'd like to ask us, we are happy to answer those. And for that matter, you know, if you, if you wanted the code, uh, we, we'd give you the code. There's no, uh, we're all friends here. So just let us know. And so thank you for your time.